this one, we'll have a look at uh, Hardware Lumen and how to enable it in Silent Hill F. Uh, by default, the game uses Software Lumen with a bunch of uh, quality reductions to keep performance in check. Now, enabling a uh, base level Hardware Lumen doesn't really affect the performance by much. Uh, it's almost negligible and you get a noticeable impact on quality. Uh, quality is much better. There's improved uh, light bleeding, there's improved uh, global illumination detail for foliage and other complex geometry, as you'll see shortly. Uh, default software lumen on the left and hardware lumen on the right side. As you can see, performance is pretty much the same, but quality is noticeably better on the right side with hardware lumen. Most notable improvement is with respect to the foliage lighting, the shadows, the ambient shadows, and global illumination for finer geometry like foliage, trees, uh, finer corners, the netting, and the fencing is much more detailed, which also improves the light bleeding effect. It's essentially a free performance boost for most RTX cards. YouTube channel MX Benchmark PC recently uh, uploaded a video comparing hardware lumen to software lumen as well as the actual epic quality settings for EV5. Now, the main difference between the epic quality and the default hardware lumen that I just showed you is primarily with respect to shadows, uh, specular GI, and ambient occlusion produced by uh, Lumen. Hardware Lumen produces a decent amount of uh, shadowing, but using the true epic settings, you get much more detailed diffuse lighting, which improves the shadowing for foliage and other vegetation. Unfortunately, this comes with a pretty large performance hit. Uh, the performance on the 5090 that he's using drops from 890, 85 to 90 to 60 FPS. That's an almost 30% performance hit. Luckily, uh, there's a way you can gain much of the performance. I'm sorry, you can gain much of the quality improvement without the massive performance hit. Adding, uh, enabling. Hardware ray tracing, hardware lumen requires just these five lines in the engine.ini file. The first one enables hardware ray tracing, the second one enables hardware ray tracing for reflections, the third enables hardware ray tracing for the final gather, the indirect lighting, the screen space, indirect lighting, uh, and the last one implements it for direct lighting. Now these four are enough for uh, just hardware ray tracing. Here we have a hardware lumen on the left and hardware lumen with all the actual epic settings on the right. So 
As you can see, the primary difference between the two is with respect to the lighting of the foliage. The indirect lighting concerning the foliage is much more detailed. On the right side with epic settings, a little too dark with a fair bit of flickering. But it might look better for some people. Uh, that is the primary difference between uh, the actual epic settings and just plain hardware lumen. So iNight primarily increases the quality of screen space, uh, bulb tracing. These are bulbs that are used for the final gather, which is the indirect lighting. It's the multi-bound pass. It increases the quality of these bulbs placed on the pixels for uh, the indirect lighting. Now, in that INI file, there are a bunch of lines, uh, including these shadow quality lines, shadow covert, these are with respect to sh virtual shadows. Uh, these enable uh, these ones here, these enable uh, s s uh, surface shadow map ray tracing, which mainly improves the penumbra shadow softness by making it more pronounced, more softer. But in my opinion, that just it might look good, but it comes with a pretty sizable performance cost. Now, mesh SDFs are already traced by default. You can remove this one. This increases the mesh tracing distance, uh, finer mesh tracing distance by 240 meters. We don't really need this. Now, here we have screen space, screen trace, screen tape tracing followed by diffuse indirect surface bias and direct lighting update factor, how often the direct lighting is updated. Remember Lumen updates uh, the surface cache after intervals, not all at once, does it in parts. So this is all related to the screen space probes that improves the diffuse lighting which makes the vegetation more detailed, vegetation lighting more detailed, vegetation shadows more detailed. So we're going to leave these here uh, and we'll switch, switch to screen scope gather maximum frames accumulated to 8. This improves, uh, reduces the, ship, the flickering with respect to the shadows. Same for temporal reflections, uh, the temporal max frames accumulated for the reflections, we'll also switch that to 8. Uh, you can leave this line here for high resolution reflections. This makes reflections uh, slightly more detailed, but there aren't that many specular reflections. We want to focus more on the diffuse reflections, the lighting being bounced around by rough surfaces. And at the bottom, it's mainly just uh, screen space reflections. I feel like the screen space reflection quality used by default is good enough. Uh, adding these lines may make it slightly better. That and subsurface scattering, but it's not really noticeable and it comes with a performance hit. So we'll use these lines uh, and now have a look at how the performance has improved and this one was the quality. So here we have hardware lumen, only hardware lumen, with the game's default app settings on the left, uh, hardware lumen with the actual epic settings in the middle, and hardware lumen with our optimized epic settings on the on the right side. So as you can see, uh, performance wise, uh, we're somewhere in the middle with our optimized preset getting over 60 to 65 fps compared to just 50 to 55 using the epic settings and 70 to 75 using the default hardware lumen the default hardware lumen settings are uh, the extreme epic settings, the actual ones are 25 to even 30% slower than baseline hardware lumen, but our preset is only 15% slower and at best at times 20%, not more than that. 
Here's a comparison of Lumen, Epic, the extreme Epic settings that were hidden by the developers and the R optimized preset on the right. So performance wise, it's around 15 to even 20% faster. And visually, it's very similar. The shadows are slightly less darker, slightly less intense, but the detail is mostly the same. I personally find the actual epic settings a little too intense. The shadows, the vegetation shadows, we tuned that out a little bit and also reduced the shimmering because the temporal frames accumulated are a little higher. That improves the stability. Here you can see that the light bleeding effect is actually better, more pronounced with our preset because of the larger temporal buffer. Slightly less darker shadows, but that's about it. <laughs>